In my last two videos on AI training, I presented a rudimentary but highly effective technique for solving simple tasks, in this case, balancing a single and then a double pendulum. In the first very simple case, a robust solution was found in less than a minute. The resulting neural network was also very compact, comprising no more than three hidden neurons. In the second case, it was more difficult, with training lasting between two and eight hours and only succeeding in finding a solution one time out of four on average. The training required a slightly different strategy, as the algorithm was initially unable to find a solution. It was therefore necessary to gradually increase the difficulty of the task via gravity and air friction to achieve a result. The networks were also much larger, with around 30 neurons and several hundred connections. The solutions found, however, were rather elegant and could withstand small perturbations without losing balance. But in the event of loss of equilibrium, none of the solutions managed to restabilize. In this video, I'm going to compare my previous results with a modern reinforcement learning algorithm, PPO. I'm really curious to see what the differences will be, particularly in terms of training time, solution quality, robustness, and network size. To make the comparison, we'll now need to interface a physics simulation with PPO. As this algorithm is much more complex, I decided to use existing tools this time. And it turns out that Isaac Sim is perfectly suited to this project. Isaac Sim, which is part of the NVIDIA Omniverse ecosystem, offers a whole range of tools for robotics-related simulations. In particular, it enables machine learning algorithms to be run in virtual physics environments. Simulations and algorithms can then be executed entirely on the GPU, resulting in excellent performance. NVIDIA helped me in the making of this video by providing me with hardware, allowing me to better exploit the capabilities of these tools. Isaac Sim doesn't provide reinforcement learning algorithms directly. So to use PPO, we'll need Isaac Lab, a Python library providing a whole set of algorithms capable of interacting with Isaac Sim. What's impressive about Isaac Lab is that the physics simulations are accurate enough to be able to exploit the results of virtual training in the real world, even for tasks requiring precision and agility, like this one. Isaac Lab is highly flexible, allowing the import or creation of custom robots, as we'll see later. To make things clearer, here's an overview of the stack we'll be using. At the base is Omnivus, of which Isaac Sim, offering a simulation solution for robotics, is a part. Next comes Isaac Lab, an open source Python library available on GitHub that lets you interact with Isaac Sim simulations programmatically. Isaac Lab also includes reinforcement learning libraries pre-configured to work with Isaac Sim simulations data. Each of these libraries implements its own version of the PPO algorithm. For users requiring specific tools or learning methods, Isaac Lab's modular architecture also makes it easy to integrate external custom libraries. Omniverse and Isaac Sim are very easy to install. Isaac Lab is a little more technical, but the detailed documentation explains everything step by step. In just a few minutes, all the tools are correctly installed. And now, let's see what the included examples look like. In particular, the simple pendulum. Several things are worth noting. Firstly, PPO takes full advantage of the scalability offered by Isaac Sim. The greater the number of agents, the faster the training. Here, 4096 agents are exploring in parallel. Then, as is often the case with examples involving pendulums, the swing up is not included. Each episode begins with the pole pointing upwards at a slight random angle. Finally, we can see that training for this task is extremely fast. This first example shows that the installation works and will enable us to familiarize ourselves with Isaac Sim. What remains to be determined is how to create a double pendulum, how to specify a reward function, how to describe the inputs and outputs, 
and how to configure the algorithm accordingly. All this may seem a little daunting at first, but at least we can start from a working example. To start things off gently, let's modify the pendulum task to include the swing up. It turned out to be much simpler than expected. In fact, each task is described using Python in a dedicated file. This file contains many of the answers to our questions, as it specifies the actions, observations, rewards and initial conditions of the task. The whole thing is fairly intuitive, and it shouldn't be too complicated to adapt this to our needs. In this case, the event CFG class is used to define the initial state of each pendulum. At the moment, we can see that a random angle and velocity are effectively applied at the start. We'll then modify these values to place the cart in the middle of the rail and set the angle to P radian so that the pole is pointing downwards. Pretty simple. Let's run the training to see if it works. The Python configuration also specifies the conditions for resetting the task. Here there are two. When the elapsed time exceeds a given value or when the cart ends up outside a specified range on the rail. I am going to skip the first minute of the training because there isn't much exciting going on. Once again, training is very fast and I find it super cool to watch the algorithm improving its technique in real time. So far I'm pretty impressed, even if it's still a simple task compared to the double pendulum. I'd be curious to test the robustness of the solution by interacting with it. To interact with the solution, I loaded the final network with a single agent in Isaac Sim. I can then apply forces to the system with the mouse and see how it adapts to these perturbations. Overall, I found the result satisfactory, especially after only two minutes of training. No matter what force is applied, it always comes back to equilibrium in the end. Now that we've mastered this simple task, let's tackle the more difficult problem of the double pendulum. The first thing to do is to create the robot that will perform the task. Once again, the documentation is excellent, providing a comprehensive tutorial explaining all the steps involved in creating your own robot. Now that we've got that down, let's dive right in and create our double pendulum. In just a few minutes, I managed to create a first working version. On the other hand, it's particularly ugly, but it's a start. And it's just the beginning of what we can do with Isaac Sim and Omniverse. There's a fundamental feature I haven't yet exploited that could really make our pendulum shine. The entire Omniverse ecosystem is based on USD, which stands for Universal Scene Description. USD was originally created by Pixar, who then made it open source. Since then, its use within the industry has grown steadily, thanks to the many advantages it offers, in addition to interoperability. As its name suggests, 
It's a 3D scene definition standard that offers total compatibility between all software that support it. This is really helpful when you're using lots of different tools, each with their own format, which is a very common situation in many 3D workflows. USD is a great subject in itself because it's so versatile and offers lots of different functionalities, especially when it comes to collaboration. In a nutshell, USD is to 3D, what USB is to connectivity, or HTML to the web. For this project, we're going to use it to import a double pendulum model made with Blender directly into Isaac Sim. Export is very simple from Blender, which supports USD natively. I'm a little skeptical, however, because beyond the geometry, the model contains many complex materials, and I wonder how well the export will retain all these features. Once in Isaac Sim, a simple drag and drop opens the USD file. It would seem that everything is fine after all, as the import has retained all the characteristics of my model. This whole process was impressively smooth. Now that the model has been correctly imported, we need to turn it into a real physical double pendulum. This turns out to be very straightforward. All I have to do is recreate all the joints between the various parts of the system. It doesn't take long to obtain a functional and much more pleasing double pendulum ready to be used for training. All that remains is to create a new task based on the simple pendulum one. Surprisingly, there aren't that many modifications to do. The action is the same, the network's output is still a force applied to the cart. We will also use the same observations as for the simple pendulum, that is the position and velocity of each joint. The biggest changes are in the reward function, which must now take the second pendulum into account, and I used the opportunity to favor solutions centered on the rail. I've increased the inference frequency from 60 Hz to 120 to cope with the much higher accuracy requirement of the double pendulum balancing task, and I set the maximum duration of an iteration to 10 seconds. A second Python file is used to configure PPO's hyperparameters. We can see that for the single pendulum, the network comprises two layers of 32 neurons. Somewhat arbitrarily, I chose to use four layers of 128 neurons for the double pendulum. I don't have much experience in reinforcement learning, so we'll see if that's enough. As with the simple pendulum, there are still 4096 agents exploring in parallel here. Apparently, the added complexity of the double pendulum has no effect on Isaac Sim's performance. After just 40 seconds, the agents were already able to balance the system. I'm genuinely impressed. I didn't expect such efficiency. Especially as I didn't use the incremental difficulty at all, as in my version. In less than a minute, PPO found a viable solution to the problem, including the swing up. Let's see the result after 5 minutes of training. Frankly, it's a clean and very stable solution. I'm repeating myself, 
but I simply find the speed of convergence of this algorithm fascinating. Especially as I'm far from being an expert in the field. I wonder what training would be like with the right settings. One aspect remains to be assessed. The robustness of the system in the event of disturbances. My own solution could cope with small ones. But if these tipped the pendulum, the network was unable to recover. Let's take a look at PPO's solution to see how it stacks up. Like my solution, it can handle minor jolts with ease. But what about stronger ones? No problem here for PPO's approach, which recovers without a hitch. Whatever happens to the pendulum, the system always returns to equilibrium. Once again, I am very impressed, especially as all this is the result of only a few minutes training. It's now time for a quick summary comparing the two approaches. The difference between training times is probably the most spectacular. To get a solution with my evolutionary algorithm, it takes between 2 and 8 hours, and in many cases, the training is unsuccessful. With PPO, a solution is found after just a few minutes, and is satisfactory in the vast majority of cases. What's more, it does not require training with increasing difficulty. The gap is even more striking when we compare the duration of training in simulated time. This measure is used to estimate the efficiency of an algorithm in extracting information from observations. On average, the evolutionary algorithm needs 34 years of simulation to find a solution. PPO, on the other hand, needs just 8.5 days. This difference perfectly illustrates the power of gradient descent. The two algorithms simply are not in the same league. As for the quality of the solutions, I find both clean and efficient. I might give the edge to the evolutionary solution for its perfect centering. Although I'm well aware that with more expertise, it would certainly have been possible to obtain a more refined solution with PPO. Finally, the difference in network size is enormous. The evolutionary solution comprises 30 neurons when PPO employs a network with four layers of 128 neurons each, for a total of 512. When it comes to connections, the difference is even more striking. Compactness is one of the advantages of this evolutionary approach which is simply not efficient enough to optimize a very large number of parameters. As for PPO, it's certainly possible to obtain much more compact alternatives if you know how. This comparison between a homemade implementation of an old algorithm and the state of the art in reinforcement learning shows just how far artificial intelligence has come in recent times. However, I don't think that evolutionary algorithms should be overlooked. They enable us to solve simple problems very quickly and are an excellent entry point into the field of machine learning. This video was also an opportunity for me to discover Isaac Lab, a brilliant tool for easily manipulating these cutting-edge algorithms and playing with real-time physics simulations. Many thanks again to NVIDIA for providing me with high-end hardware and for the technical support I received via the Omniverse forum. Download Omniverse, Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab to try them out. They're completely free. I will put the links in the description. Thanks for watching.